Welcome to another edition of The Bible Speaks. You know, this program is actually designed to help you understand your Bible because it's one unique thing we do here on The Bible Speaks. We actually read the Bible. My name is Jeremiah, and I'll be your teacher for tonight, and my reader will be Brother Sean. And if you never watch The Bible Speaks, we always deal with the Bible by subject and title. So today's title is The Ministers of God. And when you say ministers of God, we always look in the realm of man. This is my minister. This is my minister. But we don't look at the, the spiritual minister of God. So what we going to do tonight, let's look at the spiritual ministers of God. And when I say spiritual ministers of God, we talking about angels in this case. Because angels are minister in spirit. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Let's go to Hebrews the first chapter and let's pick it up at verse 5. Hebrews 1 and verse 5, if I can show you exactly that angels are ministering spirits too. Verse 5, go ahead and read, Sean. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, God my son this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Go ahead. And again, when he brings in the first begotten unto the world, he said, and let all the angels of God worship him. Go ahead. And other angels, he said, who makes his angels spirits and his, his ministers a flame of fire. Wait a minute. He said in verse 7, and of the angels, he said, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame and fire. The, that's what the angels are. The angels are minister in spirits. Because we look at ministers, you always want to look at a man and say, this is my minister. But we never, ever look at the spiritual part of this thing because the angels are ministering spirits. Drop down to verse 14 and keep reading. They are not all ministering spirits. He said, are not all, are not they all ministering spirits? The who? The angels. Go ahead. Sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. That's what the angels are. They all minister in spirits. And what is a minister? A minister is a servant. All the angels are, are servant spirits. Let's go to Psalms, the 104th chapter of Psalms. Psalms 104, and we're going to pick it up at uh, verse 1. Psalms 104, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, thou art very great, thou art clothed with honor and majesty, who covers thyself with light as with a garment, who stretched out the heavens like a curtain, who lays the beams of his chambers in the waters, who makes the cloud his chariots, who walks upon the wings of the wind. Go ahead. Who makes his angels sp spirits, his ministers a flame of fire. He say, who maketh his angels spirits, and he say, and his ministers a flame and fire. We talking about the angels right here, because we don't realize that God sits on the throne. And what he got? He got ministering spirits. He got serving spirits to do everything he need to have done. He do not come off the throne. What he do? He got angels to do all his bidding for him. And let's see what these angels sitting around. And let's see what they doing. Let's go to Psalms 103. And let's pick it up at verse 20. Let's go to Psalms 103 and pick it up at verse 20. Let's see what the angels are doing. God, uh, Verse 20. Go ahead and read. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening to the voice of his word. Go ahead. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, you ministers of, you ministers of his, that do his pleasure. You see what the angels are doing? Verse 20, it says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, they hearkening into the voice of his words. They just sitting in heaven waiting on the Lord to tell them to do something because they are ministering spirits. So they sitting in heaven, they waiting on the Lord to tell them to do something. He say, bless the Lord, ye, ye, uh, 
You hoes, you ministers of his that do his pleasure. He ain't getting off the throne. The angels are the ones that's doing his pleasure. Because when we say ministers, we always look at the realm of man. We don't know what the angels are doing. They the ones that's hearkening into his word. They the ones that's doing his pleasures. And they are ministering spirits. Uh, let's go to Revelations. Let's go to Revelations, the 12th chapter. Revelations, the 12th chapter. Let's go to Revelations, the 12th chapter. And let's pick it up at verse 7. Revelations 12 and 7. When I finish the end of the scripture, I need you to be at the next spot. Revelations 12 and 7. And if we move in a little too rapid for you, you write these scriptures down and go over them at your own convenience. Revelations 12, and let's pick it up at verse 7. Go ahead and read. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels. Now you got Michael and his angels, which is the Lord hopes, fought against the dragon and his angel because Satan uh, deceived the third of the angels to try to overthrow God. So you got a war in heaven against two mighty beings of angels. Go ahead and wait. And prevail not. Neither was there a place found any more in heaven. And the dragon, and that great, and that, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and saved it, Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. He said, and the great dragon was cast out. He said, that old serpent, which is called the devil, and Satan, which deceived the whole world, what was he cast out at? He was cast out into the earth, and all his angels was cast out with him. So where is Satan at? He roaming around here on this earth. With all his angels. Let's drop down to verse 12. And let's see what a warning the giant go give to the earth. Go ahead and wait. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devils come down unto you having great wrath. Because he knows that he has but a short time. He said woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Where we at? We on the earth ain't we? He giving you a warning. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. He said, because the devil then came down to you having great wrath. Because he know he have but a short time. So where is Satan at? Satan that got cast out of heaven. And he right here on the earth with us. You don't see him, but he right here on the earth. Now, what we need to do, we see he that got cast out of heaven. We need to find out what is Satan doing down here on earth now. Let's go to Job. Let's go to Job, the first chapter. Let's go to Job, the first chapter. And let's see what Satan is doing down here since he that got cast out of heaven. And we see he on the earth. We need to find out what is he doing. Job 1. And let's pick it up at verse 6. Job 1 and verse 6. Go ahead and wait. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. He said it was a day when the sons of God, which is our angels, they came to present themselves before the Lord. And by Satan being an angel, he had to report to Satan came among them. Now the Lord go ask Satan the question. Go ahead and wait. And the Lord said unto Satan, Where comest thou? And the Lord said unto Satan, Where you come from? Go ahead and wait. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down in it. He said, Where you come from, Satan? Satan had to answer and he had to be truthful. He said, From going up and down in the earth. He said, From going to and fro in the earth. And for walking up and down in it. That's what Satan is doing. He's just going to and fro and up and down in the earth. That's what he's doing since he done been cast out of heaven. And John gave you a warning. He said, woe be to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. 
He said, Satan and Cain down to you have a great wrath because he know he has but a short time. And what is he doing down here on the earth? Going to and fro and up and down in the earth. That's what he's doing. Let's keep going. Let's go in the Proverbs. Let's go in the Proverbs, the 15th chapter. Let's go in the Proverbs, the 15th chapter. Proverbs 15, and let's pick it up at verse 1. Proverbs 15, and let's pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. A soft answer turneth away wrath. Well, you better believe that, bro. A soft answer turneth the way wrath. If you get, I, I get angry with you and you give me a soft answer, how can I be mad at you? Can't be mad at you. He said, a soft answer turneth the way wrath. Go ahead. But grievous words stir up anger. And, but if I holler back at you, you going to be angry too. Go ahead and read. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge. All right. But the mouth of, of a fool, of fools, Pours out foolishness. Go ahead. The eyes of the Lord, the eyes, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Who is these eyes of the Lord the that's in spirits. every place, beholding the evil and the good? That's them angels that's walking to and fro and up and down in the earth. Them are the eyes of the Lord. The Lord ain't looking, and He can see. He's looking at everything at one time. You got them angels. They looking at everything. I don't care if you're in the hotel under a rock with the sister. That angel sitting there looking at you. Yeah, I don't care if you're in the corner under the dust. That angel is over there looking at you. I don't care where you at. That angel is there looking at you. Because the Lord say the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil in the good. So the angels is laying there. They looking at everything. Because what do the angels do? They walk up and down and to and fro in the earth. Let's keep going. Let's go to First Peter. Let's go to First Peter, the fifth chapter. Let's go to First Peter, the fifth chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 6. First Peter 5. And we're going to pick it up at verse 6. Go ahead and read. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. And that's what you better do, people. Hey, we don't understand. We better humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Go ahead. <laughs> that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Go ahead. Be sober. He said, be sober. Don't be drunk off of false doctrine. False doctrine. You absolutely right. He said, be sober. Go ahead. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. He said, be sober. Don't be drunk off this false doctrine. He said, be vigilant. He said, because your adversary, the devil, walking about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Devour. We see what he's doing. He walking to and fro and up and down in the earth. And what is he doing? He checking everybody out, seeking whom he may devour. That's his job. Let's keep going. Let's go into Second Chronicles. Let's go into Second Chronicles. I'm sorry. Let's go into Isaiah 45. I'm sorry, my mistake. Let's go into Isaiah 45. You know, Sean probably over there saying, huh, Chronicles? Not just yet. Yeah. Isaiah 45. And let's pick it up at verse uh, 5. Isaiah 45. And let's pick it up at verse 5. Because can't nothing happen in the city. And can't no evil happen on the city and the Lord don't do it. Isaiah 45, and when I say verse 5, go ahead and read. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God besides me. I grid thee, though thou hast not known me. Go ahead. That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. 
Go ahead. I form the light and create darkness. He said, I'm the one that formed the light, and I'm the one that create darkness. Go ahead. I make peace and create evil. He I, said, I make peace and I create evil. People don't even know that the Lord created evil. Oh, the Lord don't do no evil. The Lord said he created it. I make peace and I create evil. Go ahead. I, the Lord, do all these things. He said, I, the Lord, do all these things. I'm the one that created evil. Hey, Satan is evil, ain't he? Who created him? God did. Let's keep going. Let's go into Amos, the third chapter. Amos 3. And the average person don't even know that the Lord do evil. Oh, no, not the Lord. He won't do no evil. But he killed Sodom and Gomorrah for their acts, didn't they? Yes, he did. In the whole world. He, he drowned the whole world in the days of Noah. Because why did he why did he destroy the whole world? Because they was evil. Wickedness. Wickedness made them do it. Hey, he created evil. Can't nothing happen in the city and the Lord didn't do it. Let's go to Amos 3. And let's pick it up at verse 6. Amos 3. And let's pick it up at verse 6. Go ahead and wait. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city? And the people not be afraid. Go ahead. Should there be evil in the city and the Lord has not done it? Wait a minute. He said he created evil. He said, shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? He said, shall there be evil in the city and the Lord have not done it? The Lord created evil. He the one that did it. Go ahead and wait. Surely the Lord will do nothing but he reveals his secrets until his service the prophets. He said the Lord will do nothing. And this is another thing that people don't understand. They think the guys in the New Testament have the autonomy to change the word of God that the Lord had these brothers to write in the Old Testament. The Lord said, I will do nothing. But I reveal my secrets to my servants, the prophets. Hey, if the Lord going to change something, you should be able to read it in prophecy. If you can't read it in prophecy, the Lord ain't changed nothing. Even though you think you're reading something that the Lord didn't change, oh no. Oh no. It had to be wrote in prophecy. Let's keep going. Let's go in the Psalms. 78, Psalm 78, because when the children of Israel was down there in Egypt, and the Lord put all them plagues on Egypt, and then he killed the firstborn down there. Let's see how the Lord put all them plagues on the land of Egypt, which was the power at the time. Psalm 78. And let's pick it up at verse 42. Psalm 78 and verse 42. Go ahead and read. They remember not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. And boy, we don't remember the Lord's hand. He said, we don't remember the Lord's hand, and we don't remember the day that the Lord delivered us from our enemy. We don't have no clue that we them people. Go ahead and read. How he had rough his signs in Egypt. And his one is in the field of Zoran. He said how he wrought his signs in Egypt. Go ahead. And, they, and had turned their rivers into blood. And their flood. And their floods that they could not they could not drink. Go ahead. He sent divine sorts of flies among them, which devoured them, and frogs which destroyed them. He gave also their increase unto the caterpillar caterpillar and their labor unto the locusts. And this is what the Lord did down in Egypt. Go ahead. He destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore trees with frost. He said he destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore trees with frost. This is what the Lord did when the nation of Israel was down there in Egypt. And he brought them out of Egypt. Go ahead. Because Moses and Aaron kept going to Pharaoh and say, let the Lord say, let my people go. And the Lord kept hardening Pharaoh's heart. He wouldn't let the people go, so he put all these plagues on them. Go ahead and wait. He gave up 
he gave up he gave up their cattle also to the to the hell and their flocks to hot thermal he cast upon them the fur furnaces of his anger he said he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger go ahead wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them so how did the lord destroy egypt by sending evil angels he sent evil angels among them he just sitting in heaven he ain't got to do nothing because they all ministered spirits and i don't care even satan himself is a ministering spirit he was created to serve he didn't want to serve God in a good capacity. So I tell you what you do, Satan. You will serve because you are a minister in spirit. So if you don't want to serve me in the good capacity, I tell you what you will do. You'll serve me in the evil capacity. And so when the Lord wants to bring some evil on the city, a nation, what he do? He sent evil angels among them, just like he did down in the land of Egypt. He sent evil angels among them. Because you have to remember what we read in Hebrews 1 and in Psalms 104. They are minister and spirits. They all was created to serve the Lord. The Lord just sitting in the heavens and he get them angels. You do this. The angels hearkening to his voice. And they, they doing this pleasure and they the ones that do the work. Let's keep going. Let's go and uh, let's go back to Psalms. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's go back to Job. Let's go back to Job, the second chapter. Job two. Job two, and let's pick it up at verse one. Because Satan can't get to you if the Lord don't let him know. See, Satan had to ask the Lord, "Can he get to you?" He just can't go so low and come and get to you. If you are a servant of the true and living God, the ser a servant of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Lord will put a hedge around you. And when he put the hedge around you, Satan cannot come in. Let's make sure we understand that. Let's go to Job 2 and let's pick it up at verse 1. Job 2 and 1. Go ahead and read. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Satan, Where from whence comest thou? He asked Satan again, From whence comest thou? Because Satan had to report with all the other angels. From whence comest thou? Go ahead. And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And what is he doing? Seeking about whom he may devour. That's him going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. And according to First Peter 5, he's seeking whom he may devour. He's trying to devour you. He's looking at you, seeing if them hedges is around you. And if them hedges ain't around you, he going to jump you. Go ahead and read. And we going to give you some examples. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job? Now the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job? Satan had just come up on the Lord Job and come and get Job. The Lord had to say it. Have you considered my servant Job? Go ahead. That there is none like him in the earth. A perfect and an upright man. One that fears God and eschews evil, and, and still he holds his fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. See, who moved? He say, he asked, you got to really pay attention to this. In verse 3, he said, and the Lord said unto Satan, has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man? One that feared God and assured evil, and still he hold the fast his integrity, although thou movest me. The Lord say, Satan, you move me against him to destroy him without a cause. Satan didn't come on, the, on, on Job. The Lord say, you made me move on him without a cause. He couldn't just jump uh, Job. Without permission, 
Go ahead and wave. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man has will he give for his life. But for thine, thine hand now and touch his, put, put forth thine hand now and touch his bones and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, all that a man had will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone. Satan is asking the Lord, you put forth your hand and you touch his bone. Satan ain't talking about doing it so long. Go ahead and wait. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand. But save his life. He said, the Lord said unto Satan, he is in thy hand, but don't kill him. Don't take his life. Let's see what Satan started doing to him. Go ahead. So when Satan fought from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with swords, balls from swords of his foot until his crown, crown. And he took him a pot, a posture to scrape himself with her, and he sat down among the ashes. Boy, I mean, Satan really put the put the whammy on Job. He got a pot share, and, and he scraped himself with it. Go ahead and read. Then said his wife unto him, Does thou, does thou still re, retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. Bring your voice up. Go ahead. But he said unto her, Thou speakers are one of the foolish women speakers. What shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. But who sent Satan against Job? It was the Lord himself that sent Satan against Job. Let's give you another example. Let's go into 1 Kings 22. Let's go into 1 Kings 22. We don't know how the Lord worked. Oh, we don't know how the Lord worked. Only if we knew how the Lord worked, then we'd be a lot more careful on how we de uh, deal and uh, serve the Lord. First Kings 22, and we're going to pick it up in verse 9. First Kings 22 and verse 9. And this is Je Jehoshaphat and Ahab, and, and, and they go make a league together, but Jehoshaphat wanted to know if uh, Ahab got one prophet among these 400 that's telling them to go up, go up and take the land. And Jehoshaphat looked and said, something ain't right about these 400 prophets. That let me know one thing. Numbers don't mean nothing. All because all these brothers, all these sisters coming against us brothers who really teach in this word, it don't mean nothing. You would uh, pick it up at verse 9. You First have. Kings 22, I'm sorry, in verse 2. First Kings 22 and verse 2. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. Now it came to pass that Jehoshaphat came down to the king of Israel, which was Ahab at the time. Go ahead and read. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramah and Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not, not take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria. Go ahead. And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Will thou go with me to battle to Ramah Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou, my people as thy people, my horses as thy horses. Now the king of Israel asks, You gonna go down to the war with me? And, and, the, and, and Jehoshaphat said, Hey, my people is your people, my horse is your horses. What you do, that's what I'm going to do. Go ahead and read. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, And cry, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. He said, But one thing I want you to do, and cry at the mouth of the Lord today. Let's see what the Lord is going to say. Go ahead and read. Then the king of Israel, then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about four hundred men, and said unto them, Shall I go up against Ramah Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. Well, now he got four hundred prophets that he went and inquired, and these four hundred prophets telling him, Go up, because the Lord is going to deliver it into thine hand. Go up. The Lord is going to deliver Ramoth Gilead into thine hand. What verse are we at? We're at the end of verse 6. Go ahead and read. And, Jehosha and, Jehoshaphat, Je and Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet 
of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? Now, Jehoshaphat probably saying in this man, wait a minute. I got 400 prophets telling me to go walk, but I know they lying. Do we just have one prophet up here in here that, that, that we can inquire of, 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 of the Lord? Boy, that's something else. You got 400 men laying there hollering, go up, go up. And they all false prophets. <laughs> Numbers don't mean anything. Go ahead and read. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him, for he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. He said, But we got one prophet, this Micaiah. He don't never prophesy nothing good about me. Everything he ever say about me is evil. Why he always prophesy evil to Ahab about Ahab? Because Ahab was evil. So now the king of uh, Jehoshaphat say, don't say so. Let's see, go in and wait. Then the king of Israel called an, off an, an officer and said, haste hither, Micaiah the son of Imlah. And, and, the king of, and the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, set each on his throne, having put their robes on, put their robes in void place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. They all prophesied, go up, go up. The Lord is go give it into thine hand. One of them going to get kind of dramatic right here. Go ahead and read. And Zedekiah, the son of Shinan, made him horns of oil, of iron. And he said, thus say the Lord, with with thee shall thou push the, the Syrians until thou have consumed them. So he made them some horns of oil. He said, with these, you going to push them. Hey, he got all dramatic with it. Go ahead and wait. And all the prophets prophesied so saying, Go up to Ramah Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hands and it shall deliver it into the to the king's hand. Now hey, you got four hundred prophets telling them to go up. Go ahead and wait. And the message that was going to call to go gone to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold now, the word of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy words, I pray thee, be like the words of one of them, and speak that which is good. Oh, wait a minute. He telling the man, hey, the messenger that they sent to Micaiah, hey, he said, all the prophets are speaking good to the, uh, to the king. Let your mouth be just like they mouth. In other words, what they say, that's what I want you to say. Let's see what Micaiah going to say. Go ahead and read. And Micaiah said, is the Lord living? What the Lord said unto me? That will I speak. He said, Micaiah said, whatever the Lord said unto me, that's what I'm going to speak. Skip the 400 prophets over there that's prophesying good to the king. But go ahead and wait. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against go go against Ramah Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered him, go and prosper, for the Lord, for the Lord shall deliver unto the hands of the king. Now, but so Micaiah... He said they gave the same report that the 400 prophets gave. Now, let's see what the king of Israel going to say to Micaiah. Go ahead and read. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I cry, adjure thee that thou tells me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? Wait a minute. You had 400 prophets over there howling, go up, go up. The Lord is going to deliver it into your hand. Now here come Micaiah, say, go up. The Lord is going to deliver it into your hand. Then the king going to jump up and say, I adjure thee. Don't tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord. That let me know one thing. Ahab knew one thing, that them 400 prophets was lying to him. He knew it. Go ahead and read. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did not I tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me, but evil? Wait a minute. He said the same thing that the 400 prophets said, though. But so the, that let me know one thing. Ahab wanted to hear a lie. 
Go ahead. And if you want to hear a lie, the Lord will send you a strong delusion. That you will believe a lie. He will send you a strong delusion. Go ahead and wait. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on the throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And he said, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven on his left hand and on his right. Who is all this host of heaven on his left hand and on his right? Angels. That's them angels. That's them ministering spirits. That's go hearken to the voice of the Lord. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said, who shall pursue Ahab, that he might go up and fall at Ramah Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. Now he's saying, the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up on Ramah Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that. The angels coming before the Lord. But go in and wait. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will pursue him. I will persuade him. Persuade go him. Ahead. Sorry. And the Lord said unto him, Wait, wait. And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail. Also, also go forth and do so. Go ahead. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets, of all thy prophets. And the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. And what did he say? The yeah, spirit came forth and stood before the Lord and said, I persuade him. He said, how would you persuade him? He said, I go forth and I be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And what did the Lord say? The Lord say, go forth and do so. That spirit couldn't go forth till the Lord unleashed him. Let's keep going. Let's go into 1 Samuel. Let's go into 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter. 1 Samuel 16, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. This is uh, King uh, Saul. This is Saul, the Lord that gave Saul the job to go and kill all, uh, Agag, the king, and kill the sheep, the women, the babies, kill everything. But Saul kept the best of everything, saved the king alive, and this is the second time that the, the king Saul did not do the commandment of the Lord, and the Lord got tired of uh, 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 Saul. Uh, uh, First Samuel 16, let's pick it up in verse 1. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him? For reign over Israel. He said, how long is you going to mourn for Saul, seeing that I have rejected him? Go ahead. Fill thy horn with oil, and go, and I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. He said, now you fill your horn of oil, and you go down there to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Let's drop down to verse 10. Let's drop down to verse 10. And then, because all the Jesse children start coming before Samuel. Verse 10, go ahead and read. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons who passed before Samuel. And Samuel said unto, Z to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are, he, are, are here all thy children? And he said, There remain as yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. He says, Is all, is all your sons here? Because I know the Lord that provided the uh, 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 a son among your children. Is all your sons here? He said, no, you, we got the youngest, but the youngest is keeping the sheep. And let's see what Samuel going to say. Go ahead and wait. And Samuel said unto Jesse, send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. He said, send him, fetch him, because we ain't even going to sit down till the boy come. Go ahead and wait. And he sent and brought him, and now he was ruddy, a vat a willow of a beautiful conscience and goodly to look <coughs> goodly to look and to and the Lord said arise anoint him for this is he well, go ahead he anointing David go ahead then Samuel took the horn of wool and anointed him in the midst of his brethren and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forth so Samuel rose and went to Ramon now the spirit of the Lord after Samuel anointed David the spirit of the Lord stopped falling on David. But let's see what happened to Saul now. 
go in and wait. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and the evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Wait a minute. It say the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And what started troubling the Saul? An evil spirit from the Lord started troubling Saul. That evil spirit couldn't just come on Saul. The Lord had to send that evil spirit on Saul. Go down there because he don't have no hedges and get him. Go ahead and wait. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from God chose thee. Well, at least in the days of David and Saul and Samuel, when an evil spirit came on the brother, at least they knew what it was. <laughs> hey, we don't even know how to look and Discern. detect evil spirits now. We don't even know how to detect it. At least when this evil spirit from the Lord started troubling Saul, at least these brothers knew what they was looking at. We don't even know what we're looking at nowadays. Read that verse again, verse 15. And Samuel's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubled thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants which are before thee to seek out a man who is, who is a cunning player on a harp. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee that he shall play his, play with his, play with his, play with his hand and thou shall be well. And you know, sometimes you may have an evil spirit that's on you. And it's really troubling your mind, this evil spirit. It's really, really troubling your mind. And you know what you do? You say, you know what I need? I need to play me some smooth jazz. I need to play me some R&B, some old Motown or something. Let me soothe this evil spirit that's on me. It happens all the time. But we don't know about evil spirits troubling nobody. And we don't know how to detect the evil spirit. Sometimes when I'm troubled, I play me some music and let that, that spirit, that music soothe that evil spirit that's on me. It all, it always happens. Let's keep going. Let's go into 1 Samuel, the 18th chapter. Let's go to 1 Samuel 18, and let's pick it up at verse 5. 1 Samuel 18, and let's pick it up at verse 5. Go ahead and read. And David went out, and David went out whithersoever Saul sent him, and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war, and was accepted in the sight of all the people. Also in the sight of Saul's servants. Well, now David, he went out, and what David did, he behaved himself wisely. And all the servants and all the people died uh, accepting David. But go ahead and read. And it came to pass they came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines that the women came out of all cities of Israel singing, dancing to meet King Saul with tabrets and with joy. And were instruments of music. Go ahead. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousand. Oh, that old oh, Saul did not like that. <laughs> they, they came out of everywhere. They probably coming all out of houses, walking down the street. They playing music. They dancing before the king and they hollering. Saul had killed the thousand, and David had killed ten thousand. Oh no, I'm the king. How you going to ascribe to David ten thousand? That didn't, I don't think Saul liked that. No, they caused some problems with David. Go ahead and wave. And, and Saul was very wroth, and saying, and saying this pleased him. He said, he said, that saying displeased Saul. He was angry with that saying. Go ahead and wave. Displeased. And he said, they have ascribed unto David ten thousand, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what ha what can he have more but the kingdom? And that's exactly what he going to get. Go ahead and wait. And Saul so eyed David from that day forth. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house. Wait a minute. He said, an evil spirit, that evil spirit came on Saul, and what did Saul start doing? Prophesying. He started prophesying. Oh, you mean to tell me an evil spirit can make you prophesy? Of course. What the book say? Go ahead and read. What verse you at? I'm at the middle of uh, verse 10. Go ahead. Of the house of the Lord. And David played with his hand as others times. And there was a jobless in Saul's hand. 
and Saul cast the jobless, for he said, I will smite, for I will, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided, avoided out of his presence twice. Now Saul got a javelin in his hand, and he's scared of David now. He threw that javelin at David to smite him against the wall. And David escaped out of his uh, out of his presence twice. Go ahead and wait. And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from him. And because the Lord had put an evil spirit on Saul. Let's keep going. Let's go. Let's go back to Job, the uh, first chapter. Go back to Job one. Because Satan can't get to you if the Lord got them hedges around you, though. All you have to do is walk in the commandments and keep that law and believe on the real Jesus. I'm talking about the real Jesus you have to believe on. And if you keep that law, you believe on Jesus. I mean the real one. And the Lord have hedges about you. And let's see these hedges that he have about you. Job 1. And let's pick it up at verse 7 again. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto Satan, Which comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in earth and walking up and down in it. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in earth? A perfect and an upright man, one that fears God and is cured evil. Go ahead. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does, not, does, does Job fear God for nothing? He said, the Job, the, he ain't fearing you for nothing. Go ahead. Has thou, has, has not thou made a hedge about him? He said, hey, and Lord, you done made a hedge about Job. That hedge, that means Satan can't get in there if the Lord got that hedge about you. And that's what you want to have. You want to have the hedge of the Lord about you. And if you don't have that hedge about you, like, like a saw head, Satan going to eat you alive. But if you got that hedge about you, Satan can't come in. Go ahead. Read verse 10 again. Go ahead. How's thou not, how's thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side that has blessed the works of his hand and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thy hand now. And touch all that he has, and he will curse thee to thy face. He telling, say, he telling the Lord, you put forth your hand, and you touch him, and he'll curse you to your face. Go ahead and wait. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in, is in, is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hands. So Let's go to uh, Psalms 34. Let's start looking at this hedge that the Lord have round about you. Psalms 34. Psalms 34. Let's start looking at this hedge. Let's find out what this hedge is that the Lord have about you. Psalms 34. And we go pick it up at verse 7. We need to find out what is this hedge that the Lord had around Job. For you can find out what is the hedge that you want the Lord to have around you. Psalms 34. And let's pick it up at verse 7. Go ahead and read. The angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord and kept it round about them that fear him. And delivering them. Whoa, who is that hedge that's round about you there? Angel. He said, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Hey, that's that hedge that's what was around Job that Satan couldn't penetrate. And this is the hedge that you want about you. But you got to keep them commandments and you got to walk in that law if you want the, the Lord to send a hedge about you. This is the hedge that was around Job and this is the hedge you want about you. Let's go to uh, Psalms, uh, let's go to uh, Psalms 91. Psalms 91, because anybody who get in that secret place of the Most High, they going to have a hedge about them too. Psalms 91, and let's pick it up at verse uh, 7. Psalms 91 and verse 7. Go ahead and read. A thousand should fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it should not come nigh thee. He said, if you're in the place of safety, he said, a thousand going to fall at your side. Ten thousand at your right hand, but it ain't going to come near you. They'll see why it ain't going to come near you. Go ahead. 
Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Uh -huh. Because I have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Go ahead. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy, nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy way. It, it ain't nothing going to befall you because the Lord is going to have a hedge about everybody who get into the place of safety, into the wilderness. And he say, and ain't no plague going to come now thy dwelling. Because what he do, he gave his angels charge over that place. They got that hedge about them. That's what you want. Because Satan is running to and fro and up and down in the earth seeking whom he may devour. And you need a hedge. You need that angel round about you. For you can have that ministering spirit fighting off that ministering spirit. Let's keep going. Let's go to Luke 1. Let's go to Luke 1. And we're going to pick it up at verse 26. Luke 1. And we're going to pick it up at verse 26. Now, this is the angel Gabriel coming to uh, Mary. Go ahead and read. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin spouse to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Uh -huh. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hallow thou, thou that art highly favored. Read that over again. And the, again. Angel, and the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that art Highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Best are thou among women. Wait a minute. You mean this ministering spirit who is Gabriel the angel is the messenger of God. He was sent to Mary. Go ahead and read. Because yeah, they minister spirits. See, we always talk about ministering spirits. You're always looking at the realm of man. We never look at the realm of what the angels, they are ministering spirits too. You always talk about my minister, my minister. Hey, you never look at the angels as, as ministering spirits. You don't know what their job is, actually. I don't even know why y'all read sometimes. But go ahead. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his sins and cast in her mind what manner of situation, salutation, uh, I'm sorry, salutation this should be. Go ahead. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Well, this is the angel which said to Mary to let her know that she was going to bring forth a son, and with what to name the son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Let's keep going. Let's go into Exodus 23. Exodus 23. Exodus 23. Because Israel had got so bad, the Lord couldn't even be among these people no more. So what the Lord do? The Lord sent the angel to be among these people. I ain't got, because if I could be, if I go, if I break, come and be with you, I break out on you in a minute and kill all y'all. So I'm going to send my angel before you. Exodus uh, 23, and let's pick it up at verse 20. Go ahead, if the people had got extremely wicked now. Go ahead and read. Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Wait a minute. He said, I send the angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Go ahead. Beware of him. Obey Beware his of that angel. Go ahead. Obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. Go ahead. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak. He then... said, if thou shalt and do obey all that. Wait, wait. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice, that angel voice, and do all that I speak. Because we know that the angels are sitting in heaven, hearkening to the voice of the Lord and doing his command. So he send them, and they telling you exactly what the Lord say. Go ahead. Then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies, and an adversary unto thine adversaries. Go ahead. For my angels shall go before thee, and bring thee unto the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Pegasites, and the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Now the Lord sent the angel before the people. 
to bring them in the way because he didn't want to go among them because he would have had to kill them. We go go one other place. Let's go back to Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 1. Let's go back to Hebrews 1. Hebrews 1. And we're going to read verse 7. Hebrews 1. And we're going to read verse 7. Go ahead and read. Well, hold up. Hebrews 1 and 7. Just to show you again what the angels are. Go ahead and read. In other angels, he said, said, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. He said, and of the angels, who he said, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. All the angels are minister and spirits. And they was created to serve God. Because when you get to talking about minister, we always think about the realm of man. We never think about the angels and the realm of the spirit bears. I hope somebody understood the lesson. Thank you for your time. We would like to invite you to join us on the Sabbath Day Live via the Internet. Log on to our website, which is www.theisraelofgod.com. Click on the link Sabbath Day Live on our homepage. You will need Windows Media Player to view our program. We stream live twice every Sabbath at 10 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. Central Time. Also, if you're in the Chicago area, please feel free to join us at our study class located at 2515 East 75th Street here in Chicago. Thank you.